Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, flooding, volcanic unrest, exoplanets, cosmology, and a climate punch nobody saw coming. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star calm and quiet. No sunspots or solar flares and no eruptive behavior, but we did have a filament try to destabilize on the incoming northern quadrant. Zooming in on that region, we see the filament whip through the corona, but it was unable to release and eject. No CME. The filaments are active, but apparently happy to stay right where they are. Solar wind is calming even further the last day, bringing ambient quiet geospace and calm to geomagnetic conditions. Let's go on to Hawaii. The earthquakes at Mauna Loa have been on the rise. Since October, the normal less than 20 small shallow quakes per week has exceeded 50. They say an eruption is not imminent, but it does mean the magma is building. While places like Delhi are still waiting for the monsoon rains to arrive, Mumbai is seeing the harshest flooding in more than a decade. Dozens have died in the deluge and subsequent fallout like a dam breach. Eyes open there. Let's go to the science news. And up first, we're at a red dwarf star, the most common type of star in our galaxy, with Hubble and Spitzer combining to reveal the atmospheric composition of one of its close-in exoplanets, one of the most common types of exoplanets thought to exist in the galaxy. And there is nothing like it in our solar system. It has a rocky core of a terrestrial planet, but its hydrogen and helium and otherwise element-deficient atmosphere much more resembles one of our gas giants. Alas, it orbits in only three days. The science surrounding dwarf stars and their exoplanets is making our solar system look more unique by the day. Up next, the impossibly early galaxy problem. Veteran observers may remember our interview with Dr. Fulvio Melia, pointing to a lack of inflation and an absurd observational library of galaxies that formed far too early for our mainstream version of cosmology to be correct. Today, the math on a solution comes into play with his latest paper, and while it is in need of maturity, it definitively demonstrates the failures of the Lambda Cold Dark Matter model. Indeed, the earliest galaxies we see would not be there if modern thinking is correct. Last but not least, it began with Princeton early last year, a simple but scathing and inclusively broad umbrella placed over the entire field of climate change, claiming the failure to account for clouds properly. We saw follow-ups from Yale and numerous other universities around the world, and today we see another one from Turku, one of the top universities in Finland. Using a more appropriate sensitivity to clouds and to human forcing, they found man's contribution to global warming to be 0.01 degrees C, about 1% of what modern climate science says. The CO2 sensitivity is revealed to be about 10% of what mainstream models use, and they found that low clouds almost entirely control the temperature of Earth. This is amazing because it uses the same argument about natural versus anthropogenic forcing that we did in our latest video, but it does so without using the global electric circuit without using any particle forcing for CMIP6, and without using the sun, they showed the truth anyway. Can you imagine if they did use the particle forcing? This is why in our video, Fatal Flaw in Climate Change Science, we describe the human forcing dropping to nearly zero when you include other evidence, because when you allow more evidence into the game, you find out just how much you were missing. We greatly appreciate your support, that video was Fatal Flaw in Climate Change Science. It's linked for you below. And of course, our textbook on natural climate forcing is available at otf.cells.com. Student favorite, and I've learned it will be used again this upcoming fall semester. That one is called Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.